All right, so with your part three exam, say you see the diagram to the right and are asked, what are these images? What is the difference and which should you use? How does PET work? What is attenuation correction and how is it done? What is the magnitude of attenuation correction and why is the skin hot? What are the three coincidences? What causes the poor resolution and can it be helped? What additional shielding is needed? How long to wait after an injection of FDG? What is the typical dose to the patient? And what type of materials are the detectors? So note that in your exam, you're never going to be asked this many questions. Typically, it's going to be maybe three or four primary questions. And then as you discuss and answer your question, they may pop in a couple of these. Oh, what do you think the additional shielding might be or something like that? So these are going to be secondary, but this is the best way to cover this all in one video. So I just put all the questions right here. Everything that I think would be important to know moving forward and studying for PET CTs. So these are, uh, you know, PET CTs, as we can see, they're PET images, or I should say they are PET images, not CTs yet. So what is the difference and which should you use? So I could have marked these out, but it's okay. So just know, look at these and be able to pick them if they didn't have labels here. So which one is attenuation corrected? So that's the one here on the left. You see it has a much better resolution. It's just not as grainy. There's not as much smearing. So the attenuation correction is on the left. And this is the one ideally you use. But it's important to know that attenuated correction could cause artifacts. So it's also important to look at the one that isn't attenuation corrected. So how does PET work? So there are detectors that are wired by coincidence circuits that there's an event only if there's a pulse in both detectors within 10 to 20 nanosecond time limits. So we gain projections that make a sinogram, which we can filter back project to get an image. We use FDG, which is a positron emitting tracer in a patient. Those positrons interact with the electrons and make 0.511 MeV photons that are emitted and those are what's detected. CT can help with the differential attenuation along the path of the annihilation, whereas a pet itself can't do that. So that is how essentially a pet works. Don't get too much into the details. What I just explained there, I think is good enough to get you through for your therapeutic medical physics boards. So what is attenuation correction and how is it done? So uh, the measured signal has to be corrected for patient attenuation. So I'm going to start writing down here. So if we have an attenuation correction greater than one, or it is greater than one, it depends on the total radiologic distance of the body of line of response. For 511 kV, the attenuation correction is approximately 20. So just to clarify here, the attenuation correction is always going to be greater than one. So if we've got uh, 511 KEV, which like we do for PET here, we're going to have an attenuation correction of approximately 20. You could find this on NIST on their website as well. It depends on the half value layer of the radiation, essentially. So the energy is really going to play a part in what number that attenuation correction is. Now you need a CT to determine the distance and the depth of the patient. So you can use a PET CT or an other CT, but note that if you use another CT, you could get an error of two to three millimeter because they are not one singular unit like a PET CT is. So that's the, uh, mag well, that's some of the magnitude. So I mentioned again, 20 is the AC number that we use. And the FDG tracer, it goes all over. So the skin attenuates very little of it because there's very little skin. The epidermis is very thin. So that can cause a high reading and you will see a high signal. That is why the skin is going to kind of look hot. So what are the three coincidences? So you have a true signal, 
which are actual counts from annihilation sites. You have scatter, which are just scattered photons. You can use collimation to reduce this. And then you have random coincidences, which is just noise from the detectors. Now, what causes a poor resolution and can it be helped? So annihilation radiation is made about one millimeter from the positron emission, and it isn't exactly at 180 degrees. It's more like 180 plus or minus 0.25 degrees. So when the positron and electron interact and the KV, say there's an interaction site here, the photons don't go in perfect 180 degrees. They go in this, you know, plus or minus 0.25 degree variability. That limits the resolution to about two millimeters. And uh, no, there's at least at this point, nothing we can do about that. So what additional shielding is needed? So remember, these are typically in rooms where there is a CT. So the photons created from PET are 0.511 MeV. And those photons are higher than the energy of typically the 140 KeV CT photons. So CT shielding is about 1.6 millimeters. I'm going to start writing down here. So CT shielding is about 1.6 millimeters, obviously roughly. And so a PET CT, you think about it, we have higher energy photons. We need more shielding. So that's going to be 2 to 3 cm. Again, that's because we're working with 0.511 MeV photons. And this is 140 keV photons. Big difference there. Also look at TG108 for further explanation there. So now how long do we wait after the in injection of FDG? That's going to be approximately one hour. What is the typical dose to the patient? So we administer about a 10 to 20 millicuries. And that is going to be about 25 millisieverts per sim for the therapy. Wow. 25 millisieverts per sim for the therapist. And staff can then do approximately 2,000 PET CTs before actually hitting their annual limit. And that's even somewhat uh, overestimate, but you can do a lot of PET CTs. And then finally, what type of materials are the detectors? These are BGO or LSO. So that's a kind of a briefing of attenuation correction for PET CTs, a little extra information for your money here about PET CTs as well. Really look over this. PET CTs are used commonly in everyday clinics. And so it's important to know their value, how they're created, and why they're so important to successful radiotherapy. If you have any comments or questions, please post below. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.